So you got big dreams. You want to do stuff. You want to achieve things. So if you've had a lot of failure programming, success is usually off the table. Success is usually not the first thing that's going to pop to your mind, especially if you're doing something in the realms of art, music, writing, any of that kind of stuff. The fact of the matter is, is you can make money, lots of it, if you really, really try and work really, really hard doing what you love. You really can. Your passions, your dreams, you can do it. However, this failure programming, this was very curious to me uh, over the years uh, that I've been sober now. I've been sober for almost six years. And I can't believe it. So here I am uh, in the in the early stages of long-term recovery, like after five years, uh, you're in long-term recovery. And it has just been, it's baffling, the stuff that I'm able to realize now uh, with doing all the spiritual development uh, of the past 10 years, working with other addicts and hearing their stories and learning and growing and reading and all of that, that stuff. And the things that are occurring to me, these, these like revel, I would call them like revelations. And every time I would start a new project, it, it would be like, uh, I hope I succeed. It was like an ego dream. Well, it became an ego dream. It's like, I have to be successful at this. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go live back with my family again. And I never wanted to do that. Or I'm going to fail. I didn't want to fail. Nobody wants to fail at what they do. But this failure programming, let's talk about this for a little bit because a lot of people have it. Success is just somehow off the table for them unless they choose a matrix job or unless they get a college degree or unless they do whatever they don't want to do. You know, there is discipline required in everything and almost everything just to live and breathe and manage, you're going to have to learn some discipline. But the success thing, like, where did that come from? Where did failure become the rule uh, rather than the exception? And furthermore, why wasn't success like the first thing on your mind? Why wasn't you're going to succeed at this the first thing on your mind? Isn't that strange? Where, why would you think that you were going to fail? Where does that come from? If you're doing something you've never really tried before, uh, if you want to be a content creator, if you want to be a musician, if you want to be a singer what, or whatever you want to do, you can succeed at it and you can succeed damn well, really well, if you're willing to put in the work for it. I myself have not yet put in the work for that kind of stuff. But I, a, a new song of ours released today, and we're doing it. And I, <laughs> I love doing it. It's a lot of fun to do. If, you, if something is fun to do, you're more likely to do it. But let's get back to this failure programming. Why, why, why wasn't it in my brain already that I was going to succeed at everything I tried? Because you do. You actually do. You succeed at everything you try. But if it's got that ego spin on it, that ego spin, you know, the way my parents held me back and they did hold me back is that they, they demanded everything that I do make money or be monetized in some way before they would give not financial support, but so that they would get the fuck off my back and quit complaining to me about how much fun I was having doing what I loved. So it tainted nearly everything that I did creatively, everything from writing books to publishing books to doing art, 3D photography, all that stuff that I did over the years, it had to make money or it wasn't worth it. It had to make money or it wasn't worth it. So where did that come from? Why, why is it in so many people's brains right now that if it's not going to make money, it's not worth it? Now, there's, there's an aspect to monetizing what you do for fun. Like Twitch streamers and gamers uh, have fully exploited that. For, and for those of you 
old timers who said you'll never be able to make money playing video games. Well, you actually can. You can make quite a, a nice living out of it these days. You can do anything you want. That's what Abraham says. You can have, do, or be anything you want. So why is failure the very first thing? You, you might have a little ego twist at the beginning where you think you're going to succeed and you're like, oh, this is going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. And then once the ego realizes, oh, I'm actually, this is not, this is not going to lead to, to her getting famous or her getting more acclaim or anything like that. No, no, no. When the ego figures out that it's going to be a lot of work, the ego is like, and you know what goes along with that ego, that energy, that drive to do it. So if you're waking up in the morning and I'm doing this as a test, instead of thinking of the, th of the things that I am doing, both personally and professionally that are failing, what if I just thought of them succeeding? What would be the harm in that? What would be, what would be so wrong about that? Were, were we trained from a young age to not want things for ourselves or successes for ourselves? Where does that come from? I'm just asking the question here. Been doing a lot of shadow work lately and a lot of stuff has, has come up. And I'm like, huh, huh, where does this come from? Where does that failure programming come from? I don't know. Maybe parents, maybe the culture. Think of this carefully. And, and just remember, you can do, be, or have anything you want in life. If this universe has the, has the wherewithal to give it to you, if it has the, like, if you wanted to wish for a car, let me give you an example. So our family car is a RAV4. And I was like, man, I'd really like to, to manifest a new car. Let's get another RAV4. I want to I wanna manifest a new car. And, and I did a brand new RAV4 that I drove for work. It was a work car. It was my car, the car that I drove for work. And it was funny because here, here I go from this, this damn near homeless drug addict to having a company car in the space of five years and, and fine tuning that manifestation. I just thought it was funny. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll be a little bit, bit clearer in my manifestations moving forward. This is a short video today. I just wanted to pop on and say, what is it about that failure programming? Why is it there? Why don't we automatically think of success? And, and so many people over the years told me, don't get your hopes up. What, what are you expecting out of, out of life? I say, get your hopes up. Get your hopes way the fuck up. Get them up so high because only your ego can be let down. Only your ego can be let down. And if you do things from a place of non-ego, they're more likely to succeed. Uh, because they come from a genuine place and they come from an authentic place. And, and you can just watch your, your empire, your household, your family, your loved ones, your community, just thrive and thrive and thrive and thrive. As long as those resentments are dispensed of, can't have resentments, you can't hate Rich people and, and get rich. You can't. You can't hate sober people and get sober. You can't hate skinny people and get skinny. I'm trying to think of, of another analogy. You can't ha hate famous people when you're trying to get famous, but really nobody wants to be famous. Most people just want to live a happy, normal fulfilled, peaceful, serene life. And if that's the kind of life that you have, you want, could, can you hang out with argumentative, petty, jealous, envious, <laughs> poor in spirit people? No, you can't. No, you can't. So you can do it. 
and ask yourself the question, why is failure or why is success not an option so much of the time? Have a good day. Thank you.